Greetings, Commanders! My name is Eagle, and in today's video, we're gonna give you 8 crucial tips that you can gain power faster as a free-to-play player in case of war. So, if you like these types of videos where we give you guides and tips of how to grow faster and excel in development, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that we can grow faster and reach more people of this amazing community, as we are an official member of the content creation team in case of war. So, starting off with this video, uh, starting off with tip number eight in this video, as a free-to-play player, as a complete free-to-play player, you have to get exceptionally good at gathering resources. Because resources in this game come in four types, which are food, steel, oil, and power, or energy. And these, and these four resources are crucial for your development in the game. So whatever activity you are trying to do in the game, you would need resources for that. Either building troops, uh, constructing buildings, or even researching technology. So all these, uh, everything that you do in the game requires resources. And when you get to a level of this level over here, you would need extensive amounts of resources. Let me show you how much this building would require. So this building only requires about about 150k, uh, 150 million of uh, of combined resources. So you have to get really good at gathering resources in this game. And for that, we have a specific uh, guide that gives you a comprehensive view of how to gather resources, which offices to use, how to uh, how to do their talents or how to upgrade their talents, and everything that you need. I'll leave a card in the top for that, so we don't go, uh, we don't dive deep uh, in this um, topic. However, I want to mention something: is that you up to the point of forty-five million power. Uh, you would like after that you would only gain power by producing troops because at that point you would have all your buildings up to level 25 and your research uh and you have research tier fives uh so at that point in the game uh, all your resources or all your troops or all your power will be generated from production from producing troops so before that which is a long time which requires a long time actually to reach 45 million unless you're spending like crazy in the game um, so during that time you would require a lot of resources to reach that point so this is why it's very important and crucial to do that and paired with that, I want to go to tip number seven, which is basically invest in your gathering officers early in the game. So what you need to do is that like those gathering officers uh, are super crucial for a free to play player because the, the earlier you invest in them, the more resources you would gather on the long time regularly. That means the more buildings you can upgrade and the faster you can progress uh, overall in the game. So. These, uh, I would highly recommend investing in uh, rare tier and then going going on and investing in Evelyn, upgrading her to level 40, as well as uh, Angel. What you need to do is that you need to upgrade each of these officers up to level 40 so that you could get to Gathering Master, which would give you a huge gathering boost of 25%. We have, uh, in, in the same Gathering Comprehensive Guide, we have a full guide on how to gather your officers, which officer to prioritize first, and uh, how to best utilize their gathering skills. So make sure to check that out as well. So moving on to tip number six is basically creating a farm account. So can you guys see a pattern over here? Everything is revolving around resources and how to gain resources faster. However, creating a farm account is very crucial because it doubles the amount of resources you can actually gather daily, if not, if not even more. So it's very important to, to, to know that. If you don't know what a farm account is, it's basically creating another account uh, on the same server, like this one over here. So this is basically my base, and this is my farm account over here. I have a 4.2 million farm account that I do daily gathering uh, uh, in my farm account over here so that um, I actually uh, gain more resources from it. So if you want a full guide about farm accounts, how to create them, and what are their benefits throughout the game, uh, I'll leave a card on the top as well. I made a full video about that, so you would know everything that you need uh, about farm accounts. But 
it's very important to notice here is that you have to create this farm account as soon as you join the game so that you could be start benefiting right from the start and uh and it just and it's not just only for gathering resources. You could potentially use farm accounts later on in the game to defend towers and do uh, different kinds of stuff if if you get to a certain power level. Moving on to tip number five. So if you have just started the game or thinking about uh, starting or restarting on a new zone or a new server, I would highly recommend creating a jumper account. By a jumper account, I mean that if you go out here and look for um, Warzone information, you can see all the zones that are available. We are currently in zone 39, and there are a lot of zones. There are a lot of other zones. What I would recommend is that you can join a zone that is, for example, Dexter, let's say. You can join Dexter temporarily uh, as a jumper account. Because you would have a special item when you start the game. It's basically called the uh, Beginner's Teleport. Now, the Beginner's Teleport is the only item in the beginning of the game that allows you to migrate or travel to another zone without having to use uh, migration tickets. And that zone could be uh, a starting zone as well. So what you have to do is create an account, put it in a zone, Start upgrading that account like crazy. However, make sure you don't reach uh, HQ level 8. You have to reach maximum uh, is HQ level 7 because otherwise you will lose your beginner's teleport. I, still, I don't have a beginner's teleport over here, but I use the same tactic for this one. So what you do is that during your stay in the temporary zone that you are currently in, what you need to do is gather as much resources as you can, gain as much power as you can, and train as much troops as you can. Uh, in that period, uh, it's like basically four to five days or maybe even more, a new zone would appear. So once that zone appears, you can uh, use your, let's say zone 55 appears, you can use your uh, beginner's teleport and teleport to that zone. Therefore, you would have a huge head start. So for example, when I started at this zone, I was in zone, I think, 35, and then I went to, I came to here. Uh, when I started, everybody was like about 10k in power. I joined this zone about 400k power. As a full free-to-play player, I haven't even, like when I started this game, I haven't even spent anything and not even a single package on this game. So having that head start actually helps a lot because that way you could get easily into one of the top alliances in the game and uh, everyone would see you as a really active player and you would gain everyone's respect. So this is basically one of the tips that I would like to give you guys. So tip number four is basically always spend your action points. So action points are very crucial in this game. They allow you to attack uh, neutral units in the game, which are invaders and iron behemoths. Invaders give you uh, extraordinary rewards when you, when you attack them. They give you some experience, uh, some, some resources, speed ups, uh, stars and of course harmonicas to uh, level up the star of your commanders so however what they do as well is provide experience for your officers so this is a huge like you would uh, what you need to do is make sure that you are spending all your action points daily basis on a daily basis and make sure to uh, spend them all before you go to sleep so that they would recover overnight. I think they would need um, from 8 to 10 hours to recover. I, I don't know the exact number, but that uh, that way when you wake up in the morning, you would see that the meter is full and then you can uh, attack invaders once again. One thing I wanted to say about Iron Behemoths is that you gain as well a lot of rewards attacking Iron Behemoths over here. And one very important thing that I want to mention is that you get, you could potentially gain War Warrants. War Warrants is an item that is very crucial to upgrade your Hall of War. As you can see over here, you would require a lot of War Warrants, like 3,000 to upgrade it from level 22 to 23, which would actually hinder, uh, in the late game, hinder your uh, other buildings so that, for example, the Archive over here, you can't um, upgrade to another level of the buff if you don't have enough war warrants to upgrade your uh, your whole of war, and most importantly, your defense unit. 
So your defense turret over here requires reinforced concrete, which is uh, an item gained from attacking invaders when an event called Trial of War is active. Trial of War is an event that happens, I do believe, every two weeks, where when you attack invaders, you can uh, then gain um, encrypted notes so that you can uh, spawn Pandoras and eventually get Evelyn's uh, badges. However, uh, this invader, uh, when you attack an invader, you would gain as well uh, some chests. When you open them, you could potentially get uh, reinforced concrete to help you build or upgrade your defense turret even further. So this is a very important event for um, as well, uh, you, like when you should use your action points. Now, however, as I said, you have to always use your, uh, your action points. However, you have to save up your action point reserves. These are very important. As you can see, I have a lot of reserves for action points. And why do I do that is basically I wait for the uh, right moment, which is basically events that require me to use high and intensive amounts of action points to get in the top numbers. For example, uh, what and one of the events that I would highly recommend using your action point reserves on is basically uh, strategic uh, reserves, which is uh, an event that could potentially get you um, angel badges. Uh, which are extremely powerful and we will do a full guide on that event when it comes back to the server uh, Because that event is my in in my opinion is one of the uh, highest value or for rewards When you use your for each action point you spend so even even actually trial of heroes is actually one of the considerably uh, very good events to spend your action points reserve on because of the reinforced concrete that you can gain uh, which actually costs a lot of gold so basically it costs a lot of gold so 1000 or 2000 of these costs about 20,000 gold which is kind of insane um, however one good way to actually spend them is using your action points and this way you would be turning your action points into value and eventually into gold <laughs> so and another thing that I would like to mention uh, on the action points over here uh, is that um, it's very important to know the best time to spend your action points and whether you can actually make it to the to that event or not. So don't always spend your reserves on a weekly basis. Make sure that you gather them on a longer time period so that when you when you spend them, you actually have enough reserves to compete for high rewards. Especially as a free-to-play player, you need to prepare for these events strategically so that uh, you can get actually gain higher points. Now moving on to tip number, that was number th three, I do believe, yes, <laughs> we have reached number three. Um, or actually that was number two because the, the one for uh, action points, that was number three. So now we are at tip number two, which is basically pick your battles, or should I say pick your events. <laughs> that means that you need to pick the events that you will be going all in for. Let's see for example. So the mightiest commander over here, as you can see, I'm the overall, uh, so I'm in the overall rank of number six. Now I'm going ham on this event over here. Um, as you can see, we are gaining a lot of points. We are almost catched, uh, we almost caught up to number five over here. And we are preparing for the kill event, which is the most, um, basically with the most event that you can actually uh, get points in. And I'll leave a card at the top for specifically the Mightiest Commander and to tell you exactly how to prepare for it for each stage. However, this event is intensively focused on people who actually spend a lot of money to gain these rewards because the rewards over here, as you can see, uh, sorry, yeah, the overall rewards over here are kind of insane. So. People who are spending money on this game would definitely want these rewards, especially at least for the, five, the first five ranks. However, what I would recommend spending on uh, is events like this one over here. So, uh, so, sorry, not spending on, or uh, I mean trying to compete on. So these events actually give you some nice rewards. Uh, if you look at it, you will get 20 legendary officer badges, which is kind of pretty good some nice rewards and some gold. So these types of events, I highly recommend going all in on and preparing for. You can prepare for these events by looking at the event calendar and tracking their pattern over the course of uh, weeks. So 
what you need to do is save up your speed ups and save up all your um all your resources for these types of events so that once you go all in you can actually gain um like a high rank in these events because the level of competitiveness in these events are kind of lower than the uh than the overall level of competitiveness for example the mightiest commander events because of the uh because of the rewards difference but the rewards for free to play players that you gain from these events are actually pretty solid and i would highly recommend uh going for them the last tip that i wanted to give you and it's actually one of the most important tips uh of this video is that you should join um, a great zone and an exceptional guild. What I mean by that is that as a free-to-play player, uh, joining a huge or a big guild, for example, I can show you my guild over here. Now we are currently number one in the server, and we have a couple of free-to-play players that uh, are currently in the guild. So technically speaking, anyone in the range of 5 million and below is a free-to-play player at this point in the server. We have been playing the server for about three months. So you can easily reach 5 million in three months as a free-to-play player. Now, being in our guild helps you a lot because simply, as you can see over here, we are, we are on a daily basis gaining, uh, or some people are purchasing on a daily basis uh, these kind of supply chests. Now, the supply chests are very important for a free-to-play player. They would uh, provide you with uh, resources, speed ups, and all the goodies that you need to develop faster. Now, joining one of these top guilds, however, requires some requirements of power and activity. Now, if you are very active as a free-to-play player, for example, in my guild, I'm, I'm the leader of currently of VTR, I would always accept players who are actively speaking and engaging in the guild. No matter what their power is, if, they, if I see that they are growing and trying to grow in the game, I would definitely uh, consider accepting them in the, in the guild. Because this way, these players will eventually, in the future, uh, become very strong, and they would help us definitely when in terms of force. Especially uh, because we have a lot of city buffs as well, uh, as well as all the uh, chests that are gained from the purchases on a daily basis. So all in all, you have to make sure that the community that you are surrounded with are actually um, pretty good. They, are, they care for you and they are the only people that you would enjoy the game with. Make sure as well to join a zone that has set rules and that is that doesn't have internal conflicts or civil wars. Because like these types of zones, usually uh, free-to-play player are kind of um, neglected in and it's not easy to stay in such zones because you will be going in and out with wars and you can't keep up with everyone that uh, else that is trying to spend on the game. So you will end up uh, just not enjoying the game. So make sure that your zone actually has some set of rules, some set of communication, uh, like Discord, uh, Discord channel for the for the for the event. <laughs> Sorry for the fireworks <laughs> that are going outside, but as as I said, it's it's super important to have these uh, set rules for for the zone itself, so that you can make sure or uh, that you're even comfortable playing in this zone. So let so. If you think that this video was helpful, if you gained some experience out of this video, please make sure to support the channel by subscribing to it and liking this video. It helps a lot. Your support helps to grow this channel and reach a bigger audience. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.